I think we're all connected in some soul level. A lot of days where I wonder. The question why, it was bugging me. I think um, as the world becomes smaller, the tolerance of different religions and faiths becomes greater. Yes, I do. I do believe that there is something bigger than what we might be able to see with our own eyes. I think part of that's because it was what I was taught to believe. And the other part has been formed over the years through my own experience. I feel like the times that I've fallen short on that, um, because there's been times that I've questioned that belief. Uh, it's when things aren't going right uh, with either myself or with the world. And it's easy, I find at that point, to forget how beautiful and complex life is. Um, but through a variety of experiences, whether they be positive or sometimes even negative, I found that those experiences are the ones that I've come to find and firm the belief that there's definitely something greater. My spiritual philosophy, uh, it can be summed up probably in three, um, three points uh, and First off, it is to love one another. And that means each other, that means the earth. Um, to give thanks, always, would be another point. Mm -hmm. And then I've come to find to pray always, or to at least try my best to pray always, is uh, another guiding principle. And. Uh, those things all have to work together in order for, at least in my life, to feel the most fulfilled and the most balanced as possible. And when one of those three are out of the mix, that's when I can feel myself falling out of my relationship with God. I grew up with the beliefs that my parents instilled. Um, and then after a while, I fell out of those beliefs. Um, but through time and growing up and experience and effort, uh, I've come to form who, and try to define who my faith is and, and what that really means to me. To me, it's very difficult to define um, and really pinpoint what that means. Uh, it's a constant evolution and it means to me asking questions, it means being a part of a community, it means taking initiative individually on my spiritual path um, and having a willingness to grow. Looking back on it, it seems like the time I chose to exclude God from my life, it was a very young time. Um, for me, it happened when I was in eighth grade. And a lot of things happened that year that kind of shook up how the journey 
or at least my faith life at that point, where it was at that point. Um, at that point, all I had were what my parents had told me to believe and what I had learned in school. And in eighth grade, uh, somebody very close to me that I trusted and someone who was a spiritual leader to me um, was taken from me just without the ability to ask questions or, you know, you had this feeling of wondering why and when you lose someone you trust it, there's just a void there that, um, you know, you might not, I know I didn't have the maturity to really understand at that point. Um, it sounds, it sounds very weird to say this, uh, but also at that point in my life, 9-11 happened. And I didn't think that it impacted me as much as it did. Um, but it was another time where I felt a sense of security, completely lost. I mean, the word terrorist had never been brought up in my house or in my family's house. This concept of how fragile life really is uh, played a very big part in the months that followed that event. And again, I didn't really think it was that impactful at the time, but looking back on it, it was a very big turning point in it was another time where the sense of security that I thought existed just was taken away. And from there on, um, I just kind of nosedived. Uh, I, I fell into this period of really deep depression and really bad anxiety. And I just kind of shoved God out of my life. It was a childhood image of God who I had come to believe. And I pushed that aside because it didn't exist in the chaos that was going on inside my head. I pushed God out. There wasn't really room for God in the chaos that I felt. And to fill the void, I did everything I could to take it out on myself. Uh, so there were a lot of questions I had growing up in that period of high school that I couldn't fill because it was being filled with unhealthy thoughts and unhealthy actions. I didn't understand all the questions that were going through in my mind and I didn't understand the loss of security and hurt this person that was supposed to be special and holy and it was never about what I was doing. It was about I didn't feel like I had control over my thoughts. So I took action on something I thought I could control and
you know, you talked about there's like a light bulb that you kind of realize what's happening and you, can, you just wake up. It was immediately followed up with, the, with an experience in which I learned two very important things. And one of them was to never be afraid to ask for help. And the other was that in order to be the best person that you can be to others in the world, you have to first learn how to forgive yourself. And over the next few months, in trying to embrace those two pieces of my life that had really been missing, I learned that I found God again. And I learned that God had really been there all along. I've been inspired by people of different faiths. Uh, in fact, many of them have been some of my greatest teachers. Um, it was important for me to learn about other faiths to either chart a different path or to solidify where I felt comfortable in my own religion that I had grown up with. Yes, I was searching. I found that by learning about other faiths and attending services with different denominations, that we are much more alike than we are different. And that so long as we love each other and respect one another, there's all a place for us and a path for us to follow. And I don't really like to use the word tolerating because I think that has more negative connotation than we are intending it to have um, but it's about respecting and those beliefs can be different it's not worth it's not worth killing someone over at the end of the day we all I hope that we all can find a place for one another and that we can love each other I mean, I think if you look at all the major world religions, you'll find that the common denominator is love and respect and a loyalty to something greater than oneself. I'd also say that I probably differ from at least the realm of most typical organized religions in the sense of I don't feel like I have to wear it on my sleeve. I don't have to wear what I believe on my sleeve. Um, I feel like others should just know by my actions that, you know, it might not matter what I call myself, but what matters is that respect and love are obvious and compassion is obvious and it takes work to do that but that's at least the goal the one of the struggles with still being part of an organized religion is this um push that exists to evangelize and change other people's faith. And I'm not in a position to say I'm for that. Uh, it's definitely one of the lines that I have to balance by staying in, um, in an organized faith. I did work in college in uh, a third world country and there was this girl that I had met there and we were working. Uh, it wasn't a religious oriented trip, it was a service based trip, construction, 
medical clinics, things like that, working within the community. Comes a point that, you know, it's an entire day, so you have to use the restroom. And this girl, in the very limited foreign language that I had known, um, understood. And she took me down this dirt path to her family's home. And this girl, she welcomed me into her home, opened or slid across this metal panel, and there was a hole in the ground as the family's bathroom. No running water, nothing. She was so proud to have shared something of hers with me. And I thought, wow, what compassion, what generosity. And this girl had no idea who I was or she just knew I was there to try and help. And she was grateful. And then lo and behold, on the way home, we're in the airport and there's another group that we're with. And this gentleman comes over and asks our group, how many churches did you start down there? And I just thought, I wonder if this person sees the faith that's already there instead of trying to change someone else that's different or looks different. Fear is poison. <laughs> I would define fear as the absence of, the absence of love, the absence of hope, the absence of control. Fear just roots me in my humanness. <laughs> Uh, it really makes me know my place in this. Uh, fear to me, um, at least I know I'm most afraid when there's something out there. You know, I don't fear spiders or heights or, you know, that's just trivial stuff, but the thought of the unknown of what does the future hold and what happens when you die and will everything really be okay? We don't have all the answers and because there's things I don't know the answers to, that makes me afraid. You know, we're all on this journey and it means that we act like humans along in the journey. That means good things sometimes, but it, it means some bad things too. And I'm, I'm guilty of it. I think a lot of us are guilty of that, whether we call it sin or just evil or whatever one's faith calls what's wrong. But we all play a part in it. There's a lot of people on this journey together. We make mistakes. Which means that bad things happen in life. You know, it's we make a greedy decision and it hurts somebody else, or we, you know, make, we make a choice that might impact someone and that has an impact on another person in this journey. So it means that the world is probably never perfect, but the fact that we are all at least trying is a really good start. My name is Lauren, and I am on a journey.